As we begin chapter 7 of Young and Friedman's University Physics, the first section is called Gravitational Potential Energy. Chapter 6 had to do with kinetic energy and with work. Chapter 7, uh, we begin to look at potential energy. Potential energy is, is the potential kinetic energy, as it were, the potential energy that can be expended. And when we talk about gravitational potential energy, we're talking about if I'm holding a baseball a certain height above the ground, what potential energy does that ball have if I let it go? Uh, potential energy due to gravitation, energy that can be in, unleashed if I let go of it. And so potential energy is, is fairly easy to understand if you remember that work equals force times distance. Distance in gravitational potential energy is simply going to be the distance from wherever a ball is, wherever, wherever it is, and where it's going to go. So this doesn't have to be all the way to the ground. Uh, similarly, the ball can be in motion uh, when you, you start the distance. But basically, you're talking about a certain distance. Let's call it y uh, for the y-axis, since gravitation is usually conceived of as vertical up and down. Or you could think of it as h, a certain height. Uh, and so that part of figuring out the potential work that can be done by gravity is easy. It, it's just simply the distance is the height above the ground. Force, of course, when we're talking about, um, uh, well, in general, Newton's second law is F equals ma, force equals mass times acceleration. Acceleration, uh, in the case of gravity, is a constant, at least near the surface of the Earth, uh, 9.8 meters per second squared, or alternatively, 32 feet per second squared. And so the formula is quite obvious. Uh, gravitational potential energy is going to be mass times acceleration times height, or mg uh, times h, or mgy is another way of doing it. That's uh, Young and Friedman use y, uh, where m is the mass, g is the constant, 9.8 meters per second squared, and h, or y, is the height, the distance it's going to travel. So that's pretty simple. Mechanical energy uh, can be conserved, uh, although not always, but when, when only the force of gravity is doing work, this is somewhat of a theoretical situation because you're going to have air resistance in some, in some cases and, and you might have friction in others. Um, uh, but so when, but when, if, when only the force of gravity is doing work in a kind of ideal situation, then the total of kinetic energy and potential energy is going to be constant. So the kinetic energy at point one plus the potential energy at point one is going to equal the kinetic energy at point two plus the potential energy at, at point two. And there's some lovely diagrams in Young and Friedman that uh, kind of give a bar graph of, uh, for example, the, the kinetic energy being uh, complete and there being no potential energy or the potential energy being full and there being no kinetic energy. So for example, let's say that you're going to drop a ball um, and you're holding it you know, five meters above the earth. Well, there's no kinetic energy if the ball's not moving, um, uh, but it has lots of potential energy. By the time, if you let go of that ball, by the time it hits the ground, uh, there's no potential energy, but it has just as much kinetic energy as it had potential energy to begin with. So um, the K1 drops out and the, and the uh, potential energy two uh, U being the symbol for potential energy uh, drops out. So you will have a complete conservation of mechanical energy in that kind of a situation. And of course here are the formulas plugging them in. Kinetic energy is one half mv squared. Um, and as we just said, potential energy is mass times g times y. So uh, the uh, kinetic energy at point one uh, plus the potential energy at point one equals the kinetic energy at point two plus the potential energy at point two. Uh, so if it has zero velocity uh, to start off, then that first part here is going to be zero. Similarly, if it has no distance, if it's reached zero, uh, then it's not going to have any potential energy at the bottom. And so you're left with a nice little potential energy equals at the top equals kinetic energy at the bottom, which allows you to solve for velocity, allows you to solve for the height, allows you to solve for several unknowns without getting involved with more complicated uh, equations from uh, the earlier chapters on distance and velocity and so forth.
So there are some cases, however, where other forces are in the mix. And we might call this work other, air resistance, friction, those other kinds of things. And in that case, then we want to, to factor in a loss. Eventually, the second law of thermodynamic uh, will uh, come into play with the heat loss and so forth. So kinetic energy at point one plus potential energy at point one plus whatever work is done by other factors in the system is going to equal the kinetic energy at point two plus the potential energy at point two. So that is basically 7-1 gravitational potential energy.